I'll play with them in a minute. But Bobby, uh, you know, you have performed, drop some names on me. I mean, you <laughs> have performed with Dizzy Gillespie, Tito Puente, Paquito de Rivera, Bongo Santa Maria, Rey Barreto, Marco Rizzo, Arturo Sandoval, Chico Faro, Candido, uh, I mean, Larry Harlow, you, the, the list just goes on and on and on. You must have like a thousand anecdotes. Well, tell us yes, about I, those guys. and most of them I can't say here. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've been blessed. I've been very blessed. And one of the things that I was blessed in, that I've been blessed in, is when I started my career, I was always the youngest person in the groups that I, that I played with. The first major gig that I did when I graduated from college was through the auspices of a great bass player, Mr. Victor Venegas, who is of Chicano descent, who was one of the co-founders of the Mongo Santa Maria uh, band in the early uh, 60s, he recommended me to a great pianist by the name of Marco Rizzo, who many of you don't know, he was the uh, author of the I Love Lucy theme, Desi Arnaz's uh, musical director, and also a uh, protege of the great orchestral composer Igor Stravinsky, mm -hmm. who, who he studied composition with an orchestration at UCLA. Not only a good friend of Ernesto Lecuona, which is considered Cuba's greatest composer. Exactly. Uh, Marco was a, a mutual friend of ours. And right. We, and and it, I, there's so much that we can talk about Marco because you you collaborated with him. I mean, he had, Marco had a Latin jazz quartet, you and him, and Mongo, I think, no? No, no, Candido. The great Candido, the great you, and Marco, and who else? And, uh, and Victor Venegas. Okay, the, Victor the bassist. Venegas. But we, also, but we also played in a, in a big band context. The first gig I ever did with Marco was, believe it or not, at the World Trade Center. And I got there early in the plaza. And uh, at that time, we had checkered cabs. And we didn't, I didn't have a car at the time, so luckily there were checkered cabs, these big, huge cabs. I got there, I got there early, and I was setting up the drums. And who's the first person I see walking up, pushing the, this, this uh, stand with three congas in it? is Candido Camero. Wow. Then all of a sudden, Mauricio Smith comes up, a great Panamanian uh, virtuoso flautist and multi-saxophonist uh, who was a part of the original Saturday Night Live band. Then Jerry Dodgen, the great lead alto player, comes up. Then uh, Victor Paz, the great lead uh, trumpet player, comes up. Um, I mean, everybody that was anybody at that time, at that time and now uh, Ronnie Cooper, the great baritone saxophonist, who many of you know his work, through his work with uh, Eddie Palmieri and the Mingus Dynasty. Big, I mean, all of these incredible musicians come up, are uh, coming up on the stage. Like, hey, kid, you know, how yeah. are you? What's your name? This is that. After we do the first, uh, we do the concert. It was a very high pressure situation because I had to sight read the music. And because of my training, I was able to do that. And it's not just reading the music, it's interpreting the different fields, etc. So all of a sudden, Mauricio Smith comes up to me, and he goes, uh, hey, kid, you, you ever done recording sessions before, jingle work? I said, sure, <laughs> which was kind of like a half-truth. And So he goes, be at this recording studio tomorrow at 9 a.m., NOLA Recording Studios at 57th Street, right across from Carnegie Hall, where the Steinway showroom is for Steinway pianos. I get there early to make sure that I'm on time. And who walks in? Maestro Chico Ofarin. Wow. He, and I said hello to him. He goes, oh, nice to meet you, Bobby, this and that. Mauricio has told me a lot about, about you, etc. And that was my entree into the upper echelon of the great uh, musical dynasty that we have in New York City. Yeah. And then I started working with Mongo Santa Maria, where the general public started get to get to know me on a more intimate level. Mm -hmm. But going back to Marco Rizzo, you and, and him uh, performed... Uh, as part of this group that went around the schools. He had a Latin sure. American music project. Was that, is that, sure. that the name? And it still lives on. It still and, lives and, on. Yeah. And that, and, and, and incredible lessons that you guys used to teach the youth. Uh, right. It was incredible work that you guys well, were we doing. Went to Tell me about that. We, we went to hundreds of public schools and did concerts for children, uh, exposing them to the variety of music that is found in Latin America, from samba, from Brazil, bomba en plena from Puerto Rico, tango from Argentina, Etc. Uh, Etc. Et um, so cool. you would explain what the music was about and then perform it. Exactly, and then, <laughs> you know, it was uh, it was my first introduction to really uh, getting out there and explaining to people things because one day, you know, Marco would speak and then all of a sudden he goes, "Okay, Mr. Sanabria will now explain to you uh, the intricacies of la rumba," mm -hmm. and uh, that was this was completely uh, unplanned. So you know, I get on the mic and I had to discuss it and explain what it was about, the function of the drums the vocal tradition. Well, you, you became pretty good at it because you, now you're a, a teacher yourself. Yeah. And when we come back, 
uh, Bobby and I are going to explain about Marco, what we did together on Marco's funeral. We'll be right back. <laughs> 